All right, everyone. Welcome. Thanks for tuning in. Um, had some requests. I periodically get requests like, you know, what, what goes into a rifle build. And I get a lot, you know, people calling me, you know, hey, I, I want to get a, a bench rifle for this or an F-class rifle for this or, you know, or I want to start shooting this match. What kind of rifle do you recommend? So just wanted to do a quick video on that and uh, just received my national championship recognition um, certificate from the NBRSA from the 600 yard national um, score that uh, score light gun score that I won um, and um, pending pending record for that one too but wanted to show you that rifle um, this is the rifle that I used in that match uh, this is the rifle I use in all my uh, long range bench matches um, it it's it is similar to a lot of the ones that you see on the line, but there are some differences. So, but let me go over the similarities, you know, first, and then I'll go over the differences. Um, first thing is a high quality action. I mean, that's that's like essential. So, um, basically, for that, you cannot go wrong with a Borden. Um, Borden's you see those on the line quite a bit. Um, you also see bats on the line quite a bit. So um, I love Borden's. I think they're the best actions. Um, one of the things that I do love about it is uh, it doesn't disturb the bags. The the action momentum is really smooth. Um, that that sort of cam angle there as as the bolt goes up to um, extract the case is very smooth. Um, and I like that a lot because it does not disturb the bags at all. It's so smooth. I feel like, you know, the rifle just sits in place and does not get disturbed. So that's actually one thing that I love about the Borden in terms of like functionality is that, that you get this smooth transition. Um, and I've, I have bats, act, I have bats, I have, um, chilling actions and some others and defiance. Um, and you know some of those actions you kind of get to this part of it and then you get this quick and abrupt click you know and it's it's a real heavy click you know up especially the three lug actions it's like you know goes 75 degrees and get this massive click you know and it disturbs the bags if it's a light rifle and it's not firmly like sitting in the bag it disturbs it but this Borden uh and, and, and Bordens in general doesn't because of that uh, sort of that uh, angle there. Um, anyway, so that's one thing I like about the Bordens in terms of practicality. Um, and also there's a number of different other reasons. I mean, Jim has studied fire control um, ad infinitum. Um, and, you know, just kind of, uh, honestly, Bordens are perfect right out of the box. Like you don't even really need to mess with them a whole lot, you know. Anyway, so that's why I got that, and it has worked really well, a superb action, um, and I'm not, you know, saying that bats are bad or shillings are bad, or I'm not downplaying other actions. I'm just saying I prefer this one, um, and you may prefer others, and that's great, but, and, and, and you can't go wrong with, you know, a bat or a shilling or what, you know, you just can't go wrong, but, you know, definitely with the Bordens, you get everything right, right out the box, so, so that's important. Um, another thing is, is um, I use these Burris rings. They have, I've, I think they're called XTR or XRT, don't quote me, but they have a little inserts. Uh, they have inserts inside there um, and they come with variable thickness. So when you get your scope and um, you don't have to worry about if your um, scope mount is canted or, or 20 MOA or zero MOA or 80 MOA, whatever, um, you can adjust uh, to center that scope perfectly with those uh, inserts that are in between uh, the rings here. So um, so that's essentially why I use those. And I think, let's see if we can see them. Yeah, you can see that kind of insert right there, maybe. I don't know. Down there, you can see it. So, like, if you have to bring the scope up, uh, you know, to make it kind of centered... And that way you're not wasting any of your elevation or you're not, you know, too far right or too far left. You're kind of, you want to stay near the center um, or your horizontal there. Um, these rings give you that capacity. So, in fact, I just <laughs> I just met with somebody a couple days ago at the range and helped them put their rings in and center it. And it's centered perfectly. So, that's why I like those. The other reason, the other reason too, is I can crank these down um, a little bit more than... Uh, you know, I can torque down the 
the bolts quite a bit. I think I've torqued these down to like 26. Don't, don't do that on any other rings. I, I can get away with it with the Burris. I think it's because of the inserts. And this is a March scope, which has a lot thicker uh, metal than most other scopes. So um, the March can take a little more, at least this one, can take a little more torque there without crushing any internals. Um, and so that brings me to the scope. The March, it's a 10 by 60 high master. So 10 by 60, meaning I can go from 10 all the way up to 60. Um, and the glass is phenomenal. It is, um, I never get any weird dispersions from it. Uh, the picture is always, you know, relatively perfect. Um, and anyway, and you can crank it up to 60. Um, and then I use a circle with a dot reticle because I, I, I use the circle in the reticle to center me on the circle of the target. And, and, I've, and I've already published videos on this, so I won't go, go into too depth. But that's what I use for this is the circle with the dot. The dot I put on the X or, or the dot if it's like a, a different, like a 300-yard target. And then I put a, a ring, you know, put the circle around the rings. And it gives me just plenty of space to sort of make sure I'm centered. So that's why I like those. Um, and with the barrel, um, I've been using Bartland barrels often nowadays. Um, they just, for whatever reason, seem to just outshoot um, other brands. Uh, for me, I don't, I don't know why. I mean, I, I did get some shillings uh, a year or two ago, and, they're, and those things are hammering. So, um, you know, shillings are great too. Uh, but but Bartlands, um, I'm just, at this point, that's kind of what I'm going with right now is just Bartlands. Um, and so this one is a standard conventional twist. I think it's a seven and a half. Um, because I'm shooting a 108 bullet. So somewhere in the seven and a half, eight, eight and a half range is typically the best to sort of stabilize that bullet. So I think this one was seven and a half. And, um, and the finish length on it is determined by the weight and the balance. Okay. So, um, and this is a heavy varmint contour. Uh, I actually, for this last national that I, that I shot at, um, had no idea that that apparently the NBRSA, which is a sanctioning body for the match, I had no idea that they had uh, suspended the weight limit um, for light gun, and they were allowing uh, pretty heavy rifles there to be shot in the light gun. If I would have known that, I would have went with a 1.25 straight contour, but I didn't know that. So I went with my heavy varmint contour so I could make the light gun weight limit, which I didn't need to make, but... Um, anyway, so it doesn't matter. Heavy varmint's a great contour. Um, I do love 1.25 straights. I, I just, there's, I don't know. I usually, I just, to me, they, they perform just a little bit better, but the heavy varmint contour is, you can't go wrong. You know, it, it, it will perform well when you tune it well. So no, no problems there. Um, and I think it did finish out at 29. Again, the finish length, a couple of factors. One, you know, I tell my gunsmith, you know, if you see any bends in the barrel or whatever, or you're, you're gauging it or whatever, and you see some weird things, you see a rough spot or whatever, um, try to cut it out, you know, as long as it can finish out to a reasonable length, you know, I try not to go below 25 on guns where I, you know, can get 29 out of them, basically, maybe a 29 or 28 inch finish length. I try not to go below 25, but I also tell my smith, if you see anything weird, cut it out, um, or if it'll cut it less than 25, then call me and let's chat about it and think maybe I'll take the barrel back or whatever. I don't know, but um, not the case. All the Bartlands I've gotten, you know, it's like, oh, I can finish it maximum. Okay, cool. So I think this one's got to be a 28 or 29. But And again, 28 or 29 in this stock gives really good balance. Um, if I needed to shorten it to get good balance, then I certainly would. And like I said, I, 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 I have gone down to like 26 before to make weight but I don't want to go below 25. Um, anyway, um, and here's where uh, this setup is a little uh, less typical, is the stock. The stock is a Sarah stock, wood stock. Uh, a, a, most of the stocks that you see at, at those sort of long range matches are this style. This is called a Wheeler LRB. Um, and it's uh, basically a, uh, a guy named Alex Wheeler um, designs, basically, I think, designed this thing. And Macmillan makes the stock. 
and they send it to Alex Wheeler and then he puts on these side plates here so you get like a four inch forehand um, and then he puts his little, this is called a rudder. So when it's sitting in the bag, if you're not getting perfect forward and back and you need to move this rudder sideways a little bit to get a perfect forward and back motion, you can adjust the rudder. I haven't had to. Uh, my my bags and everything are set up really well and my rudder is straight and they tra it tracks really good. It goes back and forward perfectly. So this is one of the stocks that you see um, at those matches. Now, Here's one thing to be uh, aware of. Once you go to a four inch, th uh, four inch, <laughs> four inch forehand, um, you have to make sure that your front rest is able to go to four inches. Okay, so I use a Seb Max um, for my long range shooting with my these guns that are you know these rifles that are pretty heavy uh, because that Max weighs a ton and it can take a heavy heavy weight rifle no problem. Um, you can fire it and then slam that thing forward back to battery and that that said max is not going to move it, it it is super heavy and it's stuck to the bench basically um so and that has an adjustable i think out to like eight inches so you can have a forehand that's you know like this four in three inches you can have a forehand like this that's four one that's five six up to eight and it'll fit on the Mac. So that's one thing to be aware of. So if you do go with an LRB, be aware, you know, you, you may be getting, uh, you know, uh, something that is too wide if you have a fixed three inch top. Um, there, there are companies that sell, there's some companies that sell for some rests like tops that are adjustable, you know, so you'll just take the factory one off and then put on their brand and you can, and then, you know, and then you can go from a three inch fix to a, a four to five to a six or whatever. Um, and, and adjust it that way. But um, so just be aware of that when you when you get into these uh, four four ends that, that are larger than um, uh, three inch wide. Uh, Got to keep that in mind. So um, and the Sarah stock, I, what I like about it, it has these vents. So I stick my fan right there. You know, if it's hot and I want the barrel to cool and the fan goes right in there, cools it, cools it really quick. Um, it's very long. And so that's another consideration with your rest. Um, these wheelers are not long. I mean, look at it. Um, the wheeler is probably a good four inches uh, shorter. So that's a consideration. So what I have for my Max is I have my long uh, joystick and then I have my short joystick. So my short I use with my wheeler and my long is what I use with the Saris because I, I it, you know, I'm way back there now and I need the longer joystick. So, um, oh, and then by the way, that Seb Neo X came with several um, adjustments on the joystick. So it had all these different um, sized uh, uh, tubes that you can screw into each other and basically make it a perfect size for you, depending on whatever, you know, length of your stock is and how far your hand has to go to get that joystick. So I thought that was cool. Anyway, back to this thing. So um, the trigger is a Flavio. Um, I've been using Flavios now for, I don't know, four or five years, and they just seem to just work flawlessly. Never had one failed. Uh, they adjust pretty easily, and I can get those damn things to be extremely light. I mean, to the point where I and I think I think even Flavio put a video on, you know, maybe it's up on YouTube. I don't know. But like of, of him just blowing the trigger and then bam, it releases, you know, like and I've I've been able to do that with these, like literally adjust them to where I can just blow on it and click, you know. So um, so I and so I like a super light trigger. So that appeals to me. Um, and that's why I run Flavio's. Um, and the trigger hanger. So Jim Jim Borden now makes trigger hangers that are specific to Flavio's, specific to um, other triggers, probably like Bix and Andy's, and I think maybe Jewel. I mean, ch check with them, but I'm pretty sure Jim, you know, makes um, variable tr trigger hangers um, for different uh, brand triggers. But there you go. That's the setup, you know. Um, and again. All the all all number of different considerations for it, but in general, you know, you want a scope that has a lot of zoom. Um, you want a high quality uh, action. You want a high quality barrel. 
Uh, the finish length on it, again, don't be super rigid about that. You want it to be balanced, you know, so so you may have to sort of cut it down to where it balances. So uh, that's that's critical too. So, so good, high quality barrel that is cut to the length that's very well balanced. You want a really good chamber, you know, so when I went to you know, figure out, well, what reamer do I use? You know, I went to a couple people that I knew were, were shooting the 6BRA, which is the, the chamber job on this, and asked, like, what, what there were some good reamers, you know, and um, pick, picked one up from uh, a friend of mine. And uh, it, it, anyway, so a good reamer, too. Um, and then a, a light trigger, you know, maybe something, maybe you're the type that doesn't like a light trigger, and that's fine, too. So you don't have to go with the super light one, but... Uh, generally, um, lighter ones, you know, when you, when you go to gently sort of uh, compress them, uh, they don't move back and forward in the bag, which is, you know, a, a plus. You don't want anything moving that thing when, when you're actually firing it. So, um, and I fire all my bench guns free recoil. I'll do a video on that too. I know someone requested, hey, what, you know, how do you shoot free recoil? Um, I, I think I've already done a video on that, but I'll do a refresher. Anyway, um, and then you want a good high quality stock, you know, something that is beefy, that can hold this heavy weight, you know, you got a heavy scope, you have a heavy action, you have a heavy barrel, um, you know, typically, again, the contours are usually heavy varmint contour, some, m many people were running a 1.25 straight, that, and I think that was the case because the Inbear SA lacks their weight limit for light. And so they were able to use the heavy weight, you know, um, and so a lot of people were running 125. Uh, again, check the weight on that and make sure that you're within, you know, your weight limits if you plan to compete. Um, and there you go. That's it, you know, high, and, uh, good, you know, high quality stock and then you're, you're good to go. All right. Well, I'm looking forward to your comments, everyone. Take care. We'll see you.